how do you develop and maintain a unique voice as a writer? Hmm. Uh, um, I think most of what I do is pretty weird to begin with. <laughs> and uh, I am one of those irritating people uh, who will correct people's grammar if they use it incorrectly. And I will say that uh, unique and weird are two completely different things. But in my case, uh, being weird as far as my writing goes ends up making my writing unique. So I'm not saying that that weird and unique are the same thing. But um, yeah, just the, the weird things that go through my head anyways already kind of make uh, everything weird. Uh, as I've said, I'm huge into fantasy and science fiction. I like dark. I like strange. I like uh, also uh, crossing genres. Um, I'm writing a big, I've got a big multi-media, multi-platform thing going on right now. And I describe it as uh, horror, comedy, science fiction. And I absolutely love that particular that particular conglomeration of those three genres where there are moments where it's very funny. There's moments where it gets a bit into hard sci-fi and there's a big difference between hard and soft sci-fi, which I'll answer at a different time. Uh, so moments where it gets into like serious hard sci-fi and then you'll have moments of just absolute horror. I mean, you know, dismemberment and blood and gore and, and just horrible things happening. And then it'll jump back into sci-fi and then it'll suddenly be comedy again. I genuinely love jumping back and forth between all those things. So yeah, it just, it, everything I come up with all is already so weird um, that I think I've got the unique, uh, I've got the unique thing down. Uh, it's really, really strange the amount of times in my life I've had somebody read one of my screenplays. And I normally don't do a top page. The top page, which will have like genre and like the log line and like all that background information, I normally don't give those out. I'll just hand someone either a short script or a long script and be like, hey, do you mind just reading this and give me some ideas? The amount of times, and I, I, I would say it's probably approaching a dozen at this point the amount of times that people the very 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 first words out of their mouth when they like respond back to me is this is supposed to be animated right and my answer is always actually no it's live action it's just weird <laughs> so and i don't and i don't particularly like doing things with a lot of cg i like practical stuff i like weird costumes weird backgrounds weird lighting so it and and it, it caught me off guard probably the first, I'm going to say the first four or five times where the, the very, very first comment back was, this is animated, right? And me thinking, how did I write this in such a way that this person just automatically assumes uh, that what I wrote is supposed to be animated? It's that weird. It's that strange. It's that unique. It's that out there that they just assume that it has to be animated because you couldn't possibly do this live action. So yeah, I would say my brain kind of goes in the unique direction anyway. So I don't have to work at that too much. Uh, that that's just That's just because my brain is broken anyways. So yeah, I, would say. <laughs> I don't have to work at that one too much is, is, is pretty much my answer. Um, uh, how do you, what, how do you, how do you deal with filming outside in the elements? Okay. Um, I should probably just read the questions and not try to anticipate where it's going. Cause I had no idea where that was going. How do you deal with filming outside in the elements? I, I could probably answer this question about 15 times. Like this could come up every single one of these Q&A sessions and I'm going to say something different every time. So I've done enough crazy stuff outside uh, in the elements that uh, have no idea how I've gotten through some of them. Uh, I'll jump to, uh, I spent quite a number of years working with Marines. Uh, Marines as in like U.S., military marines of uh, veterans and we were doing stuff on jet skis and jet skis meaning which also includes boats we also had follow vehicles uh it just it was a big huge project and getting to getting to really do a deep dive into um you know all of my gopros that had to be waterproof i had to figure out where to put them 
you know, go, going in and out of marinas, going up and down boat ramps, um, placing cameras in the right place, figuring out where the jet skis are going, figuring out if there's places to get ahead of the jet skis so that you can film them approaching, then film them going by. Um, but the water, just the the element of the water itself was a, a absolutely mind-blowing thing to try to get used to. Um <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even that's not even to mention the fact that we were on the East Coast. We did all of our work between, let's say, like Long Island all the way down to Miami. So up and down the whole East Coast, we did trips in the dead of winter. Like it would be substantially below zero and we would be outside in, on our jet skis so covered up that you could just barely see us because we were so... Um, trying to keep the water off of us as much as possible. And again, me still having to deal with the cameras, where to put them, how to keep them charged, how to keep them warm, where to angle them. So so working with water it, in that capacity, if you lose, if the jet ski is going, you know, 60 miles an hour on the water somewhere and you lose, lose a camera, uh, how do you how do you retrieve it? Is there a way to get a flotation device on it? Like just all these questions. So water itself is insane. Um, the very first time we had the whole team out is there was a team of like six or seven of us and whoever was free for that filming would show up. I think the first time we had everybody out there, uh, the, they were goofing around and dropped one of my microphones into the water. One of them was giving the other one a piggy bank. They they were they were walking up the boat ramp. There was maybe 10 feet of water before you were on to land. They were being goofy. One of them had taken his lapel mic off and was holding it, jumped on the other one's back. He took two steps and dropped the microphone right into the water. Fortunately, it was a cheap microphone, not an expensive microphone, but uh, it, working with water, uh, especially over large masses of water, is absolutely exhausting I have no idea how we got through <laughs> um all right we've been going for almost 30 minutes so let's do let's do one more right now um and what is what is the next one uh how did you learn comic book writing um uh youtube <laughs> that, that would be my best answer watched a lot of videos on youtube um, i also took quite a few classes um because i really like i really like learning in that sort of structured you know here's how you go through it so a lot of i uh did a lot of online classes uh watched a lot of interviews people talking about how to do it uh have gone to a lot of different like comic-con type events in different cities uh throughout the u.s uh just hearing people talk about their process and just chatting with people um, but yeah, in short, I would say YouTube is probably the place where I've learned the most. And I, I actually think I mentioned earlier, comic book writing, I think is more different than all of the other types of writing. I think, I think writing for audio and writing stage plays and writing, you know, screenplays, I think all of those things are more similar to each other than any of them are to writing comic books. Comic books really are a are very, very big difference um, in, as far as style goes. But you absolutely can transfer your skills. And that's that's the biggest thing that I was trying to learn was how to transfer all of my skills. For a comic book, it was dialogue, um, it was stage directions, and it was being able to give good directions to the artists. And that, I actually used my design and my photography background the most, being able to give good directions to the artists so that they could take the panels and really make the most interesting and fascinating panels out of what it was that I was writing. <laughs> 